Hey everyone, I actually have a confession that I need to get out in this video. I need to apologize to you, the audience, and the founders of the Neurosity Crown, because for the first few years of this device being out, I have not done it justice in understanding its capabilities or communicated that properly to you. Because of my background, I've actually overlooked a lot of the strengths of the Neurosity Crown. And you know, that's because I went to medical school, I was trained to evaluate things like people's mood, their sleep, how well they're focusing. But it, I didn't exactly have courses on computer science in medical school or learned how to set up entire software programs through coding. Now, I knew that the Neurosity Crown had been set up for software developers in mind, but I have to admit that on my part, it was more of a conceptual understanding instead of firsthand knowledge. Now, what's cool about the last six months is that I've been working with my friend Tyler, who is a software developer, and he's totally opened my eyes about the strengths and weaknesses of different neurotech consumer devices as far as their programming capabilities go. Last month, we were able to actually train the Neurosity Crown to recognize certain thought patterns in my brain and link that to ChatGPT so that I could send commands through my brain signals to ChatGPT. And through that process, I realized how amazing of a device the Neurosity Crown really is and the true quality of its software development kit as designed by its founders. Now, like all consumer brain devices at this point, it certainly has its limitations, but where this technology is going, I am so excited about. In this video, I'll share my experiences of using the Neurosity Crown for brain computer interface projects. We'll take a look at how it actually works in terms of the brain data collection, its machine learning processes, and how it transmits data to the cloud so that you can interact with it through their software development kit. And at the end of this video, I'll certainly share who I think would benefit most from getting this device and using it at home. The device itself is actually really easy to set up. Once you get your crown, just download the Neurosity app and it will ask you to hold your phone physically closely to the device logo and it will link through what's called an NFC tag. Then you'll see your device nickname show up in the upper left-hand corner of your phone, and then you can jump into several features they have right there on the app. My favorite feature on this app is the focus option, which is really cool because the app suggests special music to listen to based on your brainwaves. The founders say that it helps shift your focus through what's called neuroadaptive music. Now, I did try this out for myself and I was actually really impressed. I used it while I was script writing and video editing and I really noticed that I was able to get into a great flow state when I was listening to the music based on my brainwaves. They have these binaural beats in the background that seems to push your brain forward into a productive state. And the music is really chill in the background. It's not distracting at all. Plus you have this data set at the end, which is really neat to look at. They also have some guided meditation options, which are interesting, but I'll save my full opinion on that for the end of this video. First, I wanna talk about the machine learning and software development capabilities of the Neurosity Crown. But first, we need to take a look at how the tech actually works so that we can better understand how to plug and play it into different projects. So this is an electroencephalography device. It captures brainwave information and sends that data to your phone app and the cloud. It has eight soft comb EEG sensors that go through your hair and detect the small electrical signals from your brain that you can pick up from the scalp. You can check the quality of the connection on the home screen and make sure that you are getting good data and that it's streaming over the cloud through Wi-Fi. What's really amazing about this device and what sets it apart from other brain wearables in the market right now is that it has an onboard computer as strong as a MacBook Air with a 1.8 gigahertz quad core processor. Other devices basically just take your brain data and send it through Bluetooth to be analyzed later. But the Neurosity Crown is taking that wealth of brainwave data coming in through the sensors and starts analyzing it right there on the device without having to send it to the cloud. That way the machine learning can be performed right right there on the device without losing a bunch of data through transmission to the cloud. First, the EEG sensors collect the data. Next, the analog front end of the device filters, amplifies, and digitizes the EEG information. Then it uses its local computing power to process and create machine learning classifications from the data right there on the device. Finally, the processed EEG data and machine learning classifiers on the device are then sent to the cloud for storage and can be transmitted back to the device as needed to manage the learning 
burning rates or any improvements that need to be done during kinesis training. And right now you might be asking, well, what is kinesis training? The kinesis training is one of the most interesting aspects of this device. If you log into the cloud platform and go to the kinesis training, you can see a drop down menu of different commands that you can train with your brain. The Neurosity Crown sensors are placed over movement control and partly over the visual centers of your brain. So when you're sitting there still, but imagine things like pinching your left hand, doing jumping jacks, or biting into a lemon, that creates a specific pattern of electrical signals that the Neurosity Crown can detect. So for example, if I pick the jumping jacks option, I follow the prompts and imagine doing jumping jacks when it tells me and try to relax my mind in between the cues. That way it creates a neural signature for resting brain signals versus imagining doing jumping jacks brain signals. Now you have to do this about 30 times to get a good signal set up, but then you can go back to the homepage and try to visualize doing jumping jacks while watching the kinesis threshold increase or decrease. If you get a good algorithm set up with the machine learning, you can pretty reliably have that kinesis threshold when you are imagining doing the movement. Then you can link it to different software programs that are sitting there waiting to fire off when your kinesis signals reach a certain threshold. You can set up several different kinesis trainings in the same session, and it's fun to test how well you can differentiate between them. As you can imagine, there's a lot of brain signature overlap between pinching your left hand and doing jumping jacks. So getting the machine learning algorithms to differentiate between the two is certainly a challenge. And what's really cool about Neurosity as a company is that they have this very well organized software development kit that you can import into JavaScript programs from a database called NPM. If you're a developer like Tyler, it's pretty easy to connect the Kinesis prompts to other software to do things like prompt chat GPT, control robots, and even play video games. Here I connected a left hand pinch prompt to chat GPT to ask it to draw a dragon when I reached the kinesis threshold. And in this one, I asked it to show a tongue if I imagined moving my tongue. We've actually publicized Tyler's code for connecting Neurosity to ChatGPT for any of you out there that want to download it and start using it for your own projects. And Tyler is open to consultations if you get stuck in your project as well. And those links are in the description of this video. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm only now truly understanding the quality of the software development kit and how cool those Kinesis trainings really are with the machine learning. Tyler and I have worked with quite a few devices at this point, including the Muse. And I have to say the Neurosity has the most developed and robust software development kit that we've worked with, with great instructions on how to use it. Tyler said it was super straightforward. So if you're a beginner, I think Neurosity is a great way to start. It uses JavaScript, which is a simple language and has great um, simplifications for just getting going. So there's way less code they have to write to actually get something functioning. Um, use on the other hand, you have to interface directly with the device and use harder to use languages. So that would be for a most more seasoned developer to jump into. And after getting the Crown Console synced up to a local Node JavaScript project, it very reliably fired off my commands to ChatGPT pretty much every time I made a Kinesis attempt. So it was really reliable and I'm looking forward to playing some video games with my brain using this method. We're gonna take a look at a couple of different platforms to include Halo. And as far as Kinesis training goes, this opens up a whole can of worms that I didn't even know existed. For example, what I've learned over the years of using EEG devices is that our brainwave baseline actually varies quite a bit from day to day and throughout the day. And because that baseline is changing quite a bit, I found that the Kinesis machine learning training algorithms worked best if I retrained my commands on the actual day of performing the task to get the best performance. I also realized how difficult it can be to get the device to differentiate between different commands. Like there's a lot of overlap between that left hand pinch and jumping jacks. So often while I was just imagining left hand pinch, the jumping jack signal would increase. So to solve for that, we set the threshold values pretty high up into the 90% range to make sure that they didn't both fire at the same time. One thing I would say is that I think the interlude between kinesis trainings needs to be extended a bit. I found it hard to visualize, then rest, and then visualize again at the pace that the kinesis training demands. It's quite mentally fatiguing to go that fast. And sometimes I didn't feel like my brain had a chance to calm down during the rest periods before I was supposed to rev back up again during the visualizations. 
during the training, I would get this sense of, oh no, I didn't rest enough. It's gonna mess up my baseline for the algorithm. Ah, it's going too fast. And you really feel that because a lot of effort goes into training these machine learning algorithms and you wanna get it right so that you can move on doing your experiments. I did really like the neuroadaptive music for focus, but it would be cool to see some more options. And I will say about using the Neurosity Crown specifically for focus and meditation features is that it's not the most comfortable brain computer interface that I've ever worn because compared to other devices, it's heavier and it weighs down on those comb electrodes that go on your scalp. And that's just the price to pay for having an onboard computer to get such good data quality. But like having a pair of headphones on, any weight that you increase decreases the amount of comfort as far as wearables go. And it's not like painful or anything to wear, it's actually quite comfortable, but I think that after wearing it for about 30 to 60 minutes, you'd wanna take a break. And I hate to compare the Neurosity Crown directly to the Muse headband as far as meditation experience goes, but I did find that this would be the best way to explain what the Crown does and does not do for meditation. So the Neurosity Crown meditation experience to me was more about using the music to get calm or to be able to focus, which is really great, but there's not a neurofeedback component to it like with the Muse headband, meaning that there's not signals during the session itself to let you know if your focus has wavered or if you're not relaxed. The neuroadaptive music does change during the session, but you can't tell how well you are doing until after the session when you look at the data. They do have a lot less guided meditations and meditation related options than the Muse, but I will say that the neuroadaptive the music was very stress. pleasant, like so much so that I didn't actually want my sessions to end because I was enjoying them so much. And they do have guided meditations, but in my opinion, the guide was going too fast to follow along at a pace that I'm normally used to for meditation. Now, my favorite setting was definitely Barnby with the Shift breath music score. Breath. I love that voice and that neuroadaptive music. It was really soothing. Inhale deeply through your nostrils. Feel your chest rise. Release the breath slowly through your mouth, letting go of any stress. One thing that the Neurosity is doing that Muse doesn't is that the music is neuroadaptive, meaning that it tries to get you more and more into a meditative state using the music itself rather than guiding you with visual or audio cues. And I did feel really calm at the end of the sessions. So overall, if you are a developer looking for a device to create projects with, man, the Neurosity Crown is definitely the way to go right now for me. It also has those really cool focus and meditation training options, but keep in mind that it has that onboard computer to get the highest data fidelity, and you can get $200 off if you use my promo code below. Thanks for using that affiliate link. It really helps support the channel. And if you wanna learn more about how Tyler and I were able to link my Neurosity Crown to ChatGPT to take thought commands from my brain, take a look at this video here and I'll see you on the other side.